Hello and welcome to 13.3 Alternating Current. In the past two lessons we saw that we can get electricity by moving around a magnet. In the second lesson we saw what direction that current is going to be. This lesson is going to talk about now the nature of that current. The first problem is if we want to get continuous current from moving a magnet around, it can actually be a bit of a problem. Imagine you have a long wire here and you've got a magnet. Well, we can move the magnet, let's say, along the length of the wire, and we're going to induce a current in the wire. Perfect. But eventually, well, it's, it's not really possible to keep on moving the, that magnet in the same direction forever. You can imagine that eventually it's going to, going to get out of range. And so this actually causes a, a serious problem, but there's a pretty simple solution. So, continuous current, the problem here is that we can't move a magnet in the same direction, sorry, in the same direction forever. Our solution is we can have the magnet move back and forth. Perfect. We just move that magnet back and forth, up and down like this, and then we, can, we, we don't have to make that magnet really go anywhere, and we get current continuously on that wire. But an interesting thing happens when we do that. Let's say we're moving our magnet up, and we get to some maximum point. Then we move it down, and we get to some minimum point. And up and down and up and down. Well, each time that we stop here, we're going to have no current. And so we'll have a zero point. And then as we move in the other direction, it's going to increase. And then at a certain point, we're actually going to have negative current. And we're going to get a shape that looks something like this. You're probably familiar with that sort of shape. We call that a, that a sine wave. And that is what we call alternating current. Alternating current is electric current that reverses direction periodically. And periodically just means at some sort of constant rate with a period. Alternating current, we call this AC, and that's as opposed to DC, which we've been working with up until now. DC is direct current. So AC, alternating current, is our new type of electricity. DC versus AC, well, this is actually a very interesting story. There were two famous electricians in the early days of electricity, Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla. And Thomas Edison built the very first power grid, which means a power grid, so some sort of network to supply electricity to homes or factories or some area. He built the very first one. He built it using DC. He built a DC power grid. in 1882. And that was a really big deal. That was a pretty amazing accomplishment. But a little while later, Nikola Tesla thought that was a good idea, but it would be a lot better with AC. So he built an AC power grid in 1896, so about 14 years later. Now, there was a bit of a turf war. Some people say DC is the best. Some people say AC is the best. Obviously, Thomas Edison had a lot of support. But in the end, AC won because AC is just better. For this purpose, AC is better. There's not really any um, argument about that. 
and you will see why in the next few lessons before the end of the chapter. For now, we're just going to say that there's less problems with AC. There's less problems. And ultimately, it won out. If you plug into the wall right now, you're going to be getting AC electricity out of the wall. That is how we get our electricity these days. So Canada's electricity is AC. It runs at 60 hertz. You notice that it's a, a sine wave, so that just means that it repeats 60 times per second. We get 120 or 240 volts out of the wall. The 240 is just for special appliances like your your fridge and your stove that need extra energy. And finally, we get about 50 to 200 amps of current out of the walls. This is for homes. So in your house, that's the kind of electricity that you have right now, if you're in Canada. Now, the last thing here is that we said 120 and 240 volts. But there's a bit of a question there, because if our current is constantly changing, and we've got current down here, well, voltage and current are related. So if the current's constantly changing, then the voltage has to be constantly changing too. So then where do we say is 120 volts? Is this 120 volts? Well, I meant to make that along the top there. This certainly isn't 120 volts. That's zero. And this down here, this is a negative. And the answer is that actually none of those ones are 120. What we call 120 is somewhere right around here. This is the RM s or root mean squared voltage so rms stands for root mean squared and the way we um, find that is by taking the entire signal and doing what it said here so we we square everything that would get a uh, shape something sort of like this then we take the average or the mean of all those values gets a value something like this, and then we take the square root of that, and that will get us our value down here. So this is a way of averaging a, a signal that alternates, because obviously if we just took the straight average of this alternating signal, well, we'd just get zero. We don't want to talk about zero. We want to talk about sort of the average energy, and so we use the root mean squared. This is the effective voltage or sort of the average voltage that we get, not the maximum. And that's it. That's our lesson there. There's a few problems to work on at the end, and I'll see you in the next lesson.